It was 1956. I was born in 1932, so we can figure out how old I was. Um, I had been in the United States Army in Alaska, where I was in the public information office. I wanted to get out of the Army early, but I wanted to get out to go to the Democratic Convention in Chicago. I got a job at the University of Chicago Press, and I presented myself and got credentials to the convention. And uh, the main thing that happened at that convention was that Adlai Stevenson was nominated, and he turned the choice of vice president over to the delegates, uh, giving them the choice to choose between John F. Kennedy and uh, Estes Keepover. They chose Keepover. So you had a very exciting couple of days there when they were going delegation to delegation. So my second co convention was 1960. I, I had gotten out of law school and my first job was writing as speechwriter for the governor of Michigan, G. Men and Soapy Williams, who was the darkest horse Democratic candidate of that year. And uh, the thing about that convention was there were no cell phones except the Kennedys had a sort of cell phone system. And all the people who were supporting him, and Soapy Williams had been endorsed Kennedy at a very strategic moment, had a, a phone right next to the, the chair that was right next to the flag that the chairman answered, and they would give him his marching orders, that we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Well, they then asked their closest, their intimates, about the vice presidential choice. Again, the vice presidency always comes up. And we told him anyone but Lyndon Johnson would be fine with us, because they regarded Johnson as very weak on civil rights and Southern senator, and they were very strong on civil rights. And they thought they had persuaded him. And when the uh, word came down that it was Lyndon Johnson, it was a at least it was a very demoralizing disaster thing. And the plan was that when they called for unanimous support for the nominee, he was going to shout, and the Michigan delegation were all going to shout, "No, no!" <laughs> I got my picture in the paper, standing next to Soapy, yelling, "No, no!" But the thing was, we got to the convention seats that day. And the Kennedys had cut us off the phone system. There was, there was no dial tone and nothing on the phone. So this was my, my lesson in, in the uh, uh, hardball. So the 1968 convention is the one everyone seems to remember yeah. in Chicago. Out of the turmoil of that convention, how did the conventions change over time? Well, you know, they started appointing commissions to change the rules, not just of the conventions, but of the primary press. At the beginning, the House Speaker, Sam Rayburn, was a tyrant at these. He would just say, let me hear the eyes and the nose, and then he would just say what he wanted. He would rule whatever way he wanted to rule, without regard to anything. He'd say, do I get unanimous consent? And the people would be yelling no. He'd say, I hear no objection, unanimous consent. So they changed it. One way was it was, it was more honest, it, it became. Secondly, they had these commissions that were appointed to re- uh, uh, write the rules of the convention, and one of the commissions, the Hughes Commission, uh, McGovern was a, there was a McGovern Commission, and his commission rewrote the rules in a way which he got the nomination the next time. So, so there was always the a reformist push to to reorganize them in a democratic way, but they always had unintended consequences. And as is going on right now with the caucus system, where some people are complaining about, that was one of the reforms that came out of these early conventions. There were also very moving moments at the convention when Bobby Kennedy, uh, after, after Jack Kennedy was assassinated, um, spoke and quoted Shakespeare and they showed this film. It, it was heart-wrenching. And, and this one, you know, as I go around, one of the things that people say, and not just the delegates, but people sitting in the bar who have no connection to convention, they're Denver residents, and they, swear, they say, well, this is a historic convention, and you tend to forget it when you're covering the, the smallnesses and the, uh, and the little competitions. But uh, yeah, to have an African-American nominee for the first time in the history of this country is history-making. And, and we'll look back and see how that expressed itself. Well, thanks, Victor. It's Thank you. It's a great purpose.